question we are going to see about genetic correlation. Silkworm breeding is a complex and challenging task as most of the quantitative traits are polygenic which are closely related and associated. Hence, to develop an improved silkworm race with all these complex characters is extremely difficult and time consuming. However, the recent research and development efforts have enabled sustainable improvement in bivalent silkworm quality, productivity, as well as stability of silkworm production in India. The production of bivalent cocoons and silk in India is important to upgrade the quality and productivity of Indian silks to international grade, which is yet to become a reality. Hence, it is necessary to venture and utilize the recent advances in molecular biology in addition to conventional approaches. Learning about hereditary traits and its genetic correlation is one such task. Let's see the hereditary traits in the silkworm. Hereditary traits or the unit transmitted from one generation to the next are called the genes. The genes reside in along the macromolecule known as DNA. The DNA in conjunction with the protein matrix forms nuclear protein and becomes organized into chromosomes. All genes in a chromosome are said to be linked to one another. Hence, they belong to the same linkage group. DNA is normally a stable molecule. Rarely a change occurs spontaneously in some part of the DNA which is known as mutation. Through the process of mutation, a gene may change into two or more alternative forms called alleles. An allele is a specific form of a given gene. Each gene occupies a specific position on a chromosome known as locus. All allelic forms of a gene are found at corresponding position on similar homologous chromosomes. The alleles which is most common in native population is referred as wild type allele. The alternative form rarely observed are called mutant. There are two types of alleles called the dominant and precessive alleles in which dominant are denoted using uppercase letter and their recessive alleles are denoted by lowercase. When more than two alleles are identified at a gene locus, they are called as multiple alleles. In silkworm, multiple alleles are found for many traits like the P locus involved in the larva markings and the C locus for cocoon color as shown below. For larva marking, P locus is involved in larva markings. PB stands for black color, PS stands for stripe, PM stands for moricot plus P for normal marking and plain P for plain marking. Coming to this cocoon color, C locus for cocoon color are indicated, C for outer layer of the cocoon, CD dilute yellow, CI inner layer cocoon, CST straw color and plus C for white color. The silkworm belongs to the order Lepidoptera the largest order in the class Insecta. Under Lepidoptera, the superfamily Bombicoidae comprises of the two families namely Bombicidae which includes the mulberry wild silkworms and the Saturnidae family comprises of the non-mulberry wild silkworms. If you see the classification of the domestic and wild silkworms, the silkworms fall under the class Insecta, order Lepidoptera, and superfamily Bombicidae, under which two families are given Bombicidae and Saturnidae. Bombyx mori, the mulberry domesticated silkworm, comes under the family Bombicidae. Bombyx mandarina, the wild mulberry silkworm, also comes under this family Bombicidae. Theophila religiosa is also a wild mulberry silkworm. It is found in Himalayan region, also comes under this family Bombicidae. Under Saturnidae family, Anthria mylita, also called as tropical tessar silkworm, Anthria roli, the temperate tessar silkworm, Anthria perni, temperate tessar silkworm of China, 
Antriya Yamami, the temperate tasar of Japan, Antriya Asamensis, Muga silkworm, and Phyllosomina resinae, the airy silkworm, which is also a domesticated silkworm in India. Phyllosomia cynthia is an airy wild silkworm, are found in the family Satanidae. Next, we will see the chromosome number in the mulberry silkworms. Domesticated silkworm Bombyx mori has a haploid number of chromosome of having 28. Bombyx mori has two near relatives which are wild. One is Theophila religiosa, which is inhabiting the temperate Himalayan mountains and has a chromosome number of 31. And the other wild relative is Bombyx mandarina found in Japan, which has 27 chromosomes. Chromosome analysis of F1 hybrid of Bombyx mandarina and Bombyx mori showed that one of the 27 chromosomes of Bombyx mandarina pairs with two chromosomes of Bombyx mori, indicating the possibility of chromosome fission during the course of domestication. Bombyx mori and hence there is an ancestral form of existing domesticated mulberry silkworms. Table reading. Bombyx mori has a distribution of Asia and Europe with a haploid number of chromosomes 28. Bombyx mandarina, hailing from Japan, has a haploid number of chromosome 27. Bombyx mandarina, hailing from China, has a haploid chromosome number of 28. Theophila religiosa, coming from Himalayan distribution, have a haploid number of chromosome of 31. The chromosomes of mulberry silkworm are very small in size, which form a graded series. The chromosomes are holocentric in nature. Hereditary traits in the silkworm Over 450 hereditary traits are known in mulberry, bombyx mori silkworm, observed in the egg, larvae, pupae, cocoon, and moth stages. Majority are related with larvae and egg characters. If you see the number of traits present in the different stages given in the table below, the egg stage has 83, lava has 318, pupa has 14, cocoon has 18 traits, moth has 24. In a total, 457 hereditary traits are present in the mulberry silkworm. More than 90% of the traits are spontaneous in horizon. They are induced by radiations chemicals, extreme temperatures, and etc. Multiple alleles are found in many loci. The following genes have five or more alleles. For the gene C, indicating the cocoon color, it has the alleles of five. Gene GR, standing for egg color, and the egg shell color, has the alleles of eight. The gene P standing for larval marking has six alleles. The gene PE standing for egg color has five alleles. AMI, AMY standing for hemolymph have five alleles. Gene HC standing for amylase and BHP standing for blood and acid phosphatase has six alleles. And gene EES standing for egg esterase has five alleles, and H gene standing for hibernation has five alleles. The gene ICTA, which stands for the inhibitor of chromostrypsin A, has six alleles. The gene LP standing for lipoprotein has 12 alleles. And the gene E, standing for plain extra legs, has an allele of 35. And the E locus comprise of as many as 35 alleles, which are all of spontaneous origin, which forms a pseudo allelic series. They also show pleiotropic action, which not only results in the repetition or disappearance of markings and appendages, but also abnormalities of gonads and genital organs. Next, we will see the cocoon colors in the silkworm. 
Most of the silkworm races bred in Japan and China are white cocoon varieties. Many cocoon color mutants are known and they include yellow, flesh, pink, green, etc. Except green, other colors are due to the catenoids and xanthophylls derived from the mulberry leaves, which appear only in the sericin layer of the silk fiber. Green color is due to flavonoids, which are distributed in both sericin and fibroin layers. The following cocoon genes are identified. For the gene C, which gives golden yellow color to the cocoon, for the gene CD gives a color dilute yellow to the cocoon and CI gives an yellow color for the inner layer. For the gene CST gives a straw color to the cocoon. Then for the gene plus C gives a white color to the cocoon. Then gene I is an yellow inhibitor for the cocoon. Then gene F gives a flesh color, gene PK gives a pink color, gene RC gives a rusty color and gene YR gives an yellowish brown color to the cocoon. And finally, gene GA, GB and GC gives green color to the cocoon shells. In mulberry silkworm, 28 linkages groups have been established which corresponds to the number of pairs of the chromosomes in this species. Historically, humans have tried to breed animals to increase their production value. Animal production is increased by improvement of environmental factors such as housing, feed composition, feed strategies, health status and farm management as well as animals with adequate genetic capacity can improve the production levels of interesting economic traits. This gene capacity is transferable to the next generation which is the main black box of animal breeding. Data collection from populations, computational progress, molecular genetic success and use of statistical formulae provide main material to estimate accurate breeding values. The estimation of breeding values is an integral part of the most breeding program for genetic improvement. In population, the genetic parameters, heritability, additive genetic variance and genetic correlation are the base knowledge of selection in quantitative genetics. Subsequently, mating assortment is a supplementary process which selection for genetic improvement is animals is possible. Selection has been based on two traditional types of data, pedigree and phenotypes. The economic species, the value of a potential replacement individual is usually a function of several quantitative characters. Selection of a certain right can lead to genetic changes in other traits because traits in an organism are not isolated from each other. Individuals are made up of genetically, functionally, developmentally and physiologically interconnected traits. To understand the genetics and for evaluating group of traits, breeders use phenotypic, genetic and environmental correlation among traits simultaneously. Knowledge of genetic correlation among important traits permit the breeder to predict what will happen to an indirect trait. If this trait is ignored completely and selection is performed for the direct trait. Many important traits are positively or negatively correlated because they are controlled by some of the same genes or because they are developmentally or structurally related. An example of genetic correlation due to a common set of genes might be the association between grain, zinc and iron content. Varieties that accumulate high concentrations of one element usually also accumulate the other, probably because of a common uptake mechanism. 
An example of a structural association between the trait is the relationship between the biomass yield and grain yield. These traits are highly correlated simply because grain yield is a large component of biomass yield. Correlations between genotypic effects for different traits are called the genetic correlation, also termed as RG. Let's see the definition for correlation. A correlation is the covariance divided by the standard deviations of the measures associated between the traits, but on scale minus 1 to 1 rather than units of measurement. The estimation of genetic correlations is done by analysis of covariance where the values of one relative for one trait are correlated with the values of another relative for a different trait. These estimates generally proceed in much the same way as the analysis of various components with the same coefficients for the same class of relatives. The estimates of correlations being ratios are notoriously imprecise. If you see the correlated response to the selection, selection of one trait will often result in response to another trait. This is genetic correlation. It is caused by the changes in the breeding value of the selected trait being correlated with the changes in the breeding value of the other trait. It is given in the formula CRY equals BA into YX into RX equals covariance A by covariance B times B into FYX and multiplied with SX. The selection of one trait can cause an apparent selection differential at another trait because of both the genetic and environmental correlations. This is a particularly a huge problem when studying natural selection in natural conditions. If you see the indirect selection, sometimes it is easier to get a response to selection for a trait by selecting on a correlated trait instead. This is the case when the heritability for the secondary trait is smaller or when it is easier or cheaper to measure. Let us see the G into E and genetic correlations. A great way to consider G times E is the expression of a character in different environments which can be considered at different characters with some genetic correlations. Correlated characters. Characters are often correlated, that is, the phenotypic value of one character in an individual is correlated with the phenotypic value of another character on that individual. Example, the circumference of your head is about one third of your height. These correlations can also be due to the environmental effects or genetic effects. The genetic causes of correlation or pleiotropy that genes affect more than one trait or character and linkage disequilibrium. This need not be constant across genes. Some genes can cause positive pleiotropy and others cause negative pleiotropy. The balance determines the genetic correlation of the two characters. Correlations are denoted by R, which subscripts to indicate genetic, environmental, phenotypic correlations. The sign of the value of the genetic correlation can be positive or negative and need not to be the same as the phenotypic correlation. Types of correlation. Phenotypic correlations indicated with RP gives the measure associated between observed performance. Genetic correlation, the RA, gives the measure association between breeding values. And environmental correlations indicated by RE gives the measure association between random environmental effects. Phenotypic correlations we find 
measures association between observed performance. Example, cows that produce more milk tend to have lower fertility. Under genetic correlations, measure association between breeding values. Example, bull that gives daughter that produce more milk tend to have daughters with lower fertility. Due to pleiotropy or negative linkage may be positive or negative. Breeders are concerned with genetic correlations because they can cause undesired changes in the traits that are important but are not under direct selection. For example, selection for grain yield alone may result in increased height and growth duration because these traits are often positively correlated with yield. Under some circumstances, it may be more effective to conduct indirect selection for grain yield or stress tolerance via selection for a correlated trait than to select directly. Analytical methods useful for measuring correlations among the traits are also useful in describing the relationship between the performance and the SE or screen and TPE. All selections in the SC for the performance in the TPE is a form of indirect selection. To predict the response in the TPE to selection in the SC, the genetic correlation between performance in the selection and the targets must be known. Let's see the variances, covariances and correlations. The product moment correlation. For two variables A and B, the product moment correlation is as follows. R equals sigma AB divided by sigma A into sigma B. The variance of a sum. If y equals a plus b, then sigma square y equals sigma square a plus sigma square b plus 2 sigma ab. Genetic covariances and correlation for trites measured on the same plot. If two different trites, say height and yield, are measured on the same plot, both genotypic and environmental effects can contribute to the correlation between line means y a equals m a plus g a plus e a y b equals m b plus g b plus e b the genetic correlation is the correlation of the genotypic effects of the true traits which is given as follows r g a b equals sigma g a b divided by square root of sigma square g into a times sigma square g into b. There is also an environmental correlation between plot residuals for different traits. The phenotypic correlation is the correlation of the line or genotype means for the two traits. R a b equals sigma p a b divided by square root of sigma square p a times sigma square p b that equals sigma g a b plus sigma e a b divided by r whole divided by square root of sigma square g into a plus sigma square e a bar r square root of sigma square g b plus sigma square e b by r Genetic correlations for the same trait measured in the different environment. It is of interest to measure the genetic correlation for yield or another trait in measured in different environments. If this genetic correlation is high, the environments can be treated as a part of one TPE as it may be assumed that there is little GI between them. Assume that the true traits of environment are called a and B, the model for each site is YA equals MA plus GA plus EA. Next, YB equals MB plus GB plus EB. Correlation between traits. Correlation between true traits is the covariance normalized by the standard deviation 
of each triad it has a range from 1 to minus 1 it is also necessary to have a reliable estimates of the covariance component at the genetic level a covariance between triad is generated when alleles affecting both the triads tend to be found within the same individuals two causes of genetic covariance and thus correlation are pleiotropy and linkage disequilibrium pleiotropy is defined as one locus affecting more than one trait it is the main cause for the existence of genetic correlation between traits and outbred population some pleiotropic genes can cause positive and others a negative pleiotropy the balance determines the genetic correlation of the two characters linkage disequilibrium can cause genetic correlation between the traits as well it is defined as the non random relationship between the alleles present at two or more loci pleiotropic effects of the quantitative trait loss a qtl or closely linked qtl each affecting a different trait can affect the value of the individual qtl for the marker assistant selection which is also called as mas mostly in eukaryotes have thousands of genes linked together in no more than several dozen chromosomes linkage between loci or between genetic elements within genes contribute to genetic correlation because these linked effects tend to be inherited together a correlation between traits can be favorable or unfavorable therefore consideration of correlated responses suggests that it might sometimes be possible to achieve more rapid progress under selection for a correlated response than from selection for the desired character itself this is called as indirect selection selection applied to some character other than the one it is desired to improve indirect selection cannot be expected to be better than direct selection unless the secondary character has a substantially higher heritability and the genetic correlation is high let's see the genetic correlation between production traits and others in production traits there is an abundance of published evidence on the genetic correlation of milk production traits in the breeding of the cattle the main focus of dairy selection has been on the increasing milk yield milk fat and protein yields are the biological and main economical interesting traits in dairy cattle different researchers have shown that genetic correlation among yield traits was strongly positive ranging from 0.49 to 0.92 the highest genetic correlation is between the milk and the protein production ranging from 0.83 to 0.92 and the lowest is between the milk and the fat production though genetic correlation for protein yield showed some lack of consistency between the beginning and the end of lactation correlation between milk and protein are more similar from study to study than correlation between milk and fat this means milk is more associated with the protein than fat yield genetic correlation for milk and the fat percentage and the milk and the protein percentage was negative although it was positive for fat and protein percentage genetic correlation across the study showed variable result estimated genetic correlations between the milk production traits in swedish holstein cows they indicated that the strength correlation between production traits declined with the increasing parity especially between milk and fat conversely other study reported that genetic correlation between milk and fat and fat and protein yields increased from lactation 1 to lactation 2 and later lactations let's see the uses of correlation it helps to predict the changes in one trait 
when selecting on another using genetic correlation it helps us to construct selection indexes involving multiple traits and finally it provides an additional information source in terms of breeding values here comes to the end of this session genetic correlation hope you enjoyed the session and stay with us thank you